Alicia with Alley Cat Games and welcome to Alchemy Crafts. Today we will be constructing a dice tower out of foam core, foam board, stuff that you can get at Target, Walmart, Dollar Tree, anywhere you can find it, you can use it. It's cool. So uh, today we will be using the black foam core. As you can see I've already kind of cut out the templates for it. That's cool. So you need foam core. Uh, you can use black, white, whatever color you want to. I prefer black because it's the color of my soul and my heart. Um, you also need a ruler. I prefer the uh, metal rulers just because they're a little more stable plus they have the cork on the bottom so it helps with sliding. Um, next you'll need a pencil to draw out your templates on here. Um, an exacto knife. You don't really need a cup unless you want to put the exacto knife in there because that shit is sharp. And then um, you'll also need a glue gun and hot glue, as well as some pins if you want to. Uh, they're just for extra st stability. You don't have to put them in, but I like how it adds a little bit of aesthetic to them. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So as you can see here, I've already cut out a majority of my templates. Um, we've got our three walls, the front, um, this I'm going to show you cutting it because, you know, whatever. But these will end up being our three ramps. These will end up being the ramp supports. And this will end up being the bottom tray. Now, I recommend making a tray for this simply because when you put a dice through it, it's going to just run right off the table. I will show you. This is one that we've already made. And I will give you a little sneak peek. See? There it goes. Now if you really get some good momentum with it, they'll just keep going. See that one went completely over there. So to fix that, we're going to create a dice tray for it. All right. Now when you're cutting, I do recommend that you have someone supervising you. If you are, you know, young, you don't want to use sharp objects on your own. Make sure that you have a parent or guardian watching you at all times. You don't want to cut off a finger because that's not so much fun. You also want to make sure that you have a surface that you can cut on too because you don't want to cut slivers or deep gouges into whatever surface you're cutting on. So again, having something to cut on is really good. So here we have the three ramps. I know you can't see it, but I've already got the markings down on them where I'll be cutting. Take your ruler. Get it nice and close on that line. Trust me, it's going to help it stay nice and straight. You're going to want to get your X-Acto knife. Again, make sure you're very careful with it. And make sure that you press the X-Acto knife up against the ruler. That way you have that nice clean edge. And if you do it good enough, you'll have a nice clean edge when you're all done. So this one is the bottom ramp. So we'll put that off to the side and we will cut out the last two ramps. Okay. These here are going to be the supports for the ramps. Now um, I will make sure to put the measurements in for you so that way you can get an idea of how uh, big to make them. And if you would like to, you are more than welcome to adjust the sizes to your liking. If you would like it a little more slim or a little bigger, totally up to you. This is just like a base model. So again, put the ruler right up against the line that you have here. And they come apart nicely nice clean edges. There's no pulling of the foam inside. It's just really nice and clean. All right, now that I've got everything cut out, it is time to assemble. Okay, so first to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to take our two side pieces and we're going to glue them together. You're going to want to um, determine which one you want as the back and that will end up being sandwiched in between the two. We're not going to stagger. We're going to just sandwich it, if you know what I'm talking about. You'll learn as we go. So you're going to take your back piece, get your hot glue, if it wants to be nice today. 
can squeeze out a nice bead along the length. That's what she said. Then you're going to want to kind of work a little hastily because otherwise the glue will set before you even get it down. So you're going to push it down really tight. Nice and tight. And again, we're not going to be using just the, the hot glue. Um, we're going to use the pins as well to kind of add more stability. After this is done, again, this is the back. It is sand, it's going to be sandwiched in between the two sides. Uh, so the next step that we are going to do is we are going to put on two of these supports onto one of the rims. All right, so the longest end of the support will be what is going to be uh, glued to the actual rim. So again, longest side, you're going to bead on some glue. And make sure you line up the side, that way there's no overhang overhang is bad. All right, there you go. You got one on there. So we'll do the other side now. Sometimes you'll get these little tiny wisps of glue. You can just snap those off. It really doesn't matter. And eventually, you just be able to cut them off with your X-Acto knife. All right, now that we have both supports on our ramp, we're going to go ahead and put it onto the top portion of our tower here. So you're going to want to go down maybe a half an inch or so. You don't have to put it directly at the top, maybe just down a little bit. Since we did only do three ramps, there's going to be one here, one in the center, and then one at the bottom. If you'd like to put more in, be my guest. Just make sure that you measure to... Um, Make sure that there's room for your dice, especially the largest ones. So, to begin with, we're going to do it on the two smaller sides of the ramp supports. And if you would like to, you can put some up top too, just kind of give it like a little bit extra. And again, you're going to want to make sure that it's nice and flush against the side. That way there's no overhang and you're not having to cut things out to compensate for the other half going up. All right, so now that that is nice and secure in there, again, you can take the hot glue and pour some in at the top because there is a bit of a gap. So if you want to close that gap, you are more than welcome to. So next what we're going to be doing is taking the front and putting the second ramp on here. This is going to go towards the middle of the template. That way uh, it will be the second ramp that the dice hit on their way down. So now we're going to take the front part and attach the ramp about midway. So what we're going to do next is attach the final ramp onto the bottom. Now. You want to make sure to line the bottom part of the ramp with the bottom of the tower. That way, when you roll, you can just come right out, and there's no gap. Because who likes a gap besides someone between your thighs? I don't have one. I don't have one. Curvy girls are awesome. Mm -hmm. Fuck society. So now that that is on, we are going to take the front piece, and we're going to Add it on right there. Okay, so this will give you a little inside view of what it looks like. Probably should have gone a little lower with this middle ramp, um, but as long as you can get a dice through it, you're perfectly fine. Again, if you would like to, you can add another ramp, like right here, maybe? That might work. I'm not sure. Do what you want to do. It's your dice tower. This one's mine. So suck it. Alright, so uh, for the last step for the actual tower, we're going to be 
gluing on the last side panel. So what I'm going to do is every free edge that I see here, I'm going to put on glue and I need to be very fast about it. Again, we are using the pins for extra support if we need it. So this doesn't have to be pretty. As long as it's on there, you're good. Ooh, I've got so many spider webs going on in this. It's not even funny. There you go. This is like the final result if you just want to do the tower. Um, again, for extra support, you can put pins in here. Uh, we've just got normal everyday sewing pins. Uh, so what you'll do with these is you'll find where the foam core meets, punch it through the first one into the second one, and if it hurts too much, this is also where the nice metal ruler comes in because you can use that as like a little barrier between, and it'll save your fingers and hopefully not bend the pins. But if it does, whatever, say they'll be, you have, they're 250 in here, you know. So here is the final result. Uh, you can go ahead and put your dice through and I've got a nice little D8 right here. Yay, it's a five. It works really great. You can use multiple dice at a time if you like. Say you're casting a thunderbolt or something like that where you need a good amount of dice. Go ahead and drop it in there. I would recommend putting pins in for those kind of rolls though. Again, extra support. Always a good thing, never a bad thing. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like us on our various social media. We have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, maybe a Snapchat coming soon. Don't know. We'll get back to you on that. And also check out our website. We will link everything down in the description below. Also, if you follow this tutorial, please make sure to take a picture and tag us in it. We would love to see your creations. That has been it for today's Alchemy Crafts. I'm Alicia with Alley Cat Games, and I hope you have a great day. Bye! Together.